Good evening from where you are watching us from. Uh, my names are ZJ Timo and welcome to the Farm Drive. And I know uh, the Farm Drive is usually ZJ Timo and Conrad Kibe, but it is well. Conrad is not here, he's mourning the loss of PSG. Uh, but we thank God still. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Farm Drive with me, ZJ Timo. Today we are going to have lots of fun. Uh, with the pan of the day, kutakuwa na weather updates, uh, kutakuwa na traffic updates. Uh, of course, for you, mwenye urata kusema kukua jam na kam, eh, lazima uchanu embrace pale, it is well, it is well. So today we are going to focus on something uh, balbish, balbish. Uh, you can see I have something balbish here. Uh, today we are going to focus on bulb onion farming and shedding some lights on bulb onion farming so make sure you tune to the end to the kipindi chalala salama to kopamoja i'll see you i'll see you uh, getting deep into onion farming and before getting started with onion farming you must first have to know that planting how do you plant onion farming what are the specifics and 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 dynamics you know for onion plant onion planting and onion farming you know we know that uh, people make or cash out go a lot of onion farming so i'm going to be with you and deal with the specifics of that and dive deep into that you know and shed some light on bad onion farming i hope to cover more so what, what is the best time to start planting onion farming uh, one thing you need to understand is that there are not enough onions grown in Kenya to satisfy the ever-growing demands. And the best time to farm onions is during the short range, such as uh, such that harvesting is done in either January and February. And on that note, uh, onions actually do not require a lot of rain. And that's why it is really good. The, the timing season is usually well, especially uh, about time in January and February. You, because onions take a long, uh, like four to five months to grow and to mature, so, ukipanda pale, eh, septem ukipanda pale October, eh, unakuja kufune January ama February, correct timing. The period of the short rains is very co a conducive environment for onion farming because, you know, eh, onion does not require a lot of water. Eh? You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, around this period between January and February, there's usually a limited supply of onions. Unapato ilikononia onions ne at 20 shillings. Like in Isaona Pata onion, your moja at 20 shillings. So if you can do your math correct, you know, and transferring your business plan, uh, the theoretical business plan to practical business plan, you can actually mine go a lot of onion farming. And presently, most mostly during that short supply, uh, many people or many suppliers run to Tanzania. But why should they run to Tanzania if we are here to teach you on onion farming? And we hope uh, that Ata Tukisha Kushanora, Umeshanoka, uh, now we will, uh, you will go on ahead and start that onion farming uh, project, you know, and even as we provide the knowledge and we work with you, you will be sure to gain some profits. I'll see you. So, yes, uh, especially, and the, uh, actually there's a big difference between the Tanzanian onion and the Kenyan onion. When a Tanzanian onion ina konga na harufu ya madaha, madaha, ina nuka tu kitungu, alafi ina konga small in size, is actually small in size and uh, uh, yes but e kenyan onion na kwanga kichwa ngumu ni kupwa unaweza patana na onion atashana na hii avocado you get ukikatakata unalia machozi sana inakuwa tears flowing down uh, but actually the, uh, you can really know that especially in, in, in the market you can know the big difference between onion from tanzania and onion from kenya and when there is a short supply in kenya uh, we actually run for onions to tanzania uh, so it's not it's not it's not usually a tiary affair, but it is well. Fun facts about onion that you need to know: ancient onions. Yesterday we took on a stemma combo cabbage ili blow a thousand candles. Imagine a thousand candles and more because you're still eating cabbage up to date. But you can imagine onions have been a part of the human diet for more than seven thousand years. Any for seven thousand years, what you can get onions to me kwa but anyway, apart from that, archaeologists have discovered traces of onion dating back to 5000 BC. Call it BC, this is before Christ appeared on this earth. Found alongside stones from figs, 
and debt in settlements from the Bronze Age. If you think about it, onions used to uh, grow as wild plants. And there are so many types of onion. There is white onion, there is, uh, what do we call it? Is it blue onion? But anyway, uh, onions used to grow as uh, as a wild plants. But right now, look at us. We are eating onions 7,000 years uh, later. So onions are blowing the 7,000th candle. Imagine. Uh, so ancient onions, 7,000 years ago, what do want to onions? And still today, what do you want to onions? What do you want to call onions? What do you want to what do you want to bedroom? Una, you want to go to the bedroom? 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 7,000 years. Imagine. Imagine the experience gained from that. It is well. Yeah, number two. Uh, if you have sliced an onion, another fun fact is if you have sliced an onion and uh, you know that half part of the onion uh, can be, can gain actually lots of bacteria. And Getting that bacteria can bring actually about a release of toxins that can cause stomach problems. So an advice is use a whole onion while you're cooking. You can use a unaza to me onion mzima. Now your story. And by the way, if you've noted, we Kenyans uh, we have our own way of doing things. Una katanga nusu neka nusu pale alafu nusu nyekesho. Ure di unajere kufanya economics apo kidogo. But uh, it is well. Now sayo mecha nuka kwamba you actually need to use a whole onion. So that you do not get bacteria and toxins uh, from uh, from the other half of onion uh, from because onions onions uki excuse me onions uki uki ziweka eh, ikai a whole night bus imaribika ina kulete shida. Uh, another fun fact is they are what we call holy onions. Ancient Egyptians worshipped onions, believing that their spherical shaped spoke something about eternity. I don't know what, uh, but anyway, aside from that, ancient Egyptians worshipped onions, was it? Onions. I guess we'll go on about on a laugh on it, we'll choose the ama. Anyway, moving on swiftly. If you're a dog lover and you have pets in your house, dog lovers, please take note that onions are really toxic to dogs and they can cause death. Because uh, once the, uh, the dog intake the onion, they really lower the blood cell count and it may be May end up the dog may end up being sickly, or the pet may end up being sickly, and it may be fatal. You know. Imagine that uh, another fun fact is onions were used as currency in the Middle Ages. Onions were acceptable form of currency and were used to pay rent, goods, and services, and they even were given us as gifts. So you can imagine present day society landlord and akujana knock talk 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 una fungua rent ko happy una mtolea vitungu mingi una mpea. <laughs> But anyway, uh, it is well, it is well. So onions were used as currency, or once used as currency, maze, to trade. Another fun fact is you can actually use onions to preserve avocados. When you take an onion, uh, and you want to cut avocado into two. You cut the avocado. Uh, so this is, this is uh, my demonstration. Here is my avocado. I cut it into two, and then I eat the first part, and the first part is remaining. Okay? I can take a piece of onion and pluck it around the other half of uh, a half piece of onion, pluck it around the other half of uh, the avocado, so that uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's not black or it's not. Uh, uh, when you wake up in the morning, your half avocado is a bit black, then it's not black and it has been well preserved. Another fun fact is that onions can, can be used to fight osteoporosis. Uh, Osteoporosis, and for those who are not aware of what osteoporosis is, it is a let's call it a disorder, a disorder that occurs uh, in the body, especially when you do not eat lots of calcium, uh, potassium for the bones and such. So you end up having weak bones. When a pata kuna watu flani flani wala vunjika mukono rahisi kuna watu flani flani wakuna weak bones. You know that is part of signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. So if you have such today is the end of that because unapako kula vitungu ko wingi unafakua unakula vitungu ko wingi because onions can be a strong weapon in battle against osteoporosis and if you're keen osteoporosis occurs to men and women in menopause 
uh, after 50 years and you cannot get children or you cannot birth children that is when osteoporosis attacks on us. so somebody has weak bones they are shaking shaking a little bit they are a bit shaky shaky get actually their diet should consi- constitute majority or majorly of onions so una pika breakfast salad iko na onions lunch ugali jele na onion salad uh, supper uh, rice and onions let that onions be part of the diet uh, in order to be and another also uh, having a balanced diet eating vegetables also uh, taking fruits you know can help curb osteoporosis now for those who don't know actually another fun fact is that onions fight diseases onions are rich in a in a nini uh, known as quercetin eh? a powerful flavonoid antioxidant that has been shown to have positive effects in people battling lung cancer Onions can also be beneficial in treatment of cataracts and even cardiovascular diseases. Uh, if you really keen, quercetin are uh, part of skin diseases that take place. Kuna pata labda kuna kama shilingi ama kuna there are uh, it, let me call it dryness of skin. Ile dryness of skin, alafu kuna rashes, skin rash that can be treated by applying onions. You can take some water, uh, some water pro, uh, probably salty water you dip in the onion alafu una, una apply at the affected area that can help curb uh, or fight diseases that's why you will uh, hear many medics actually uh, uh, tell you you know what instead of me giving you meds why don't you rush back and take your onion or apply your onion on your body for that you know they also aid in treatment of cataracts for those who don't know cataracts cataracts are, are what we call partial blindness the things that are uh, appear in your eyes so that you are not able to see fully or you're seeing blurry vision so they can treat that pamoja na carrots remember we're talking about carrots we're talking about vision we're talking about uh, uh, vegetables such as cabbages kale help in vision onions also helps in vision and also addressing uh, addressing the cataracts issue short sightedness or what we call long sight kuna watu wenye long sighted and so when they correct that a, a eyesight error they wear glasses that bring uh, things closer kuna watu wenye short sighted and when they correct that uh, that error using glasses they wear glasses that are uh, enable them to see things from afar but now onions when you take onions they it's like they break down those cataracts cataracts that are forming in your eyes majorly cataracts comes because of old age or people having eye challenges kuna za kama some dogo labda lisa ndio akiwa na eye challenges as such you need to increase their dietary in onion intake even as you give them a balanced diet which is uh, very advisable you need to increase their onion dietary intake which can help in fighting uh, cataracts you know another fun fact is according to the guinness book of world records another guinness book of world record the biggest onion ever was grown by british farmer peter glesbrook who harvested a monster sized onion in 2011 that weighed just under 18 pounds Wow. Huyo mjamaa ali harvest quite a big onion. <laughs> I'm trying to think how that onion or, or pardon me, how that onion looks like. You know there is a cartoon on us for Dog Mendoza and the the guy who had uh, an a friend. The friend was an a bulb of an onion. And so when the uh, when the friend akisikia kujiwasha, who is a bulb onion akijikuna, the 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 young the young boy analia machozi kwa sababu the friend amejikuna. So you can imagine such a scenario a big bulb on standing katikati mahali tu watu wanaikata polepole kila siku tu wakikula that entered into the guinness book of world record in 2011 another uh, fun fact is onions do not make you strong apparently people believe that taking onions make you strong or they have a capability they actually strengthen your bones but muscular you do not gain strength apparently i'm sorry sorry it is well is well another trick is sliced onions can actually soothe insect bites and that burn on the skin addition to when combined with crushed aspirin a little water slices of onion are also used as a fork treatment to cure warts so we've talked about skin diseases and uh, applying onions on that so sliced onions can actually can be used uh, to cure warts another fun fact is you know when chopping onions and you cry lots and lots of tears and you don't know why you're crying you don't know why you're emotional you don't know why you're emotional how many onions do nakata kata <laughs> you know what i'm saying but anyway if you do not want that to happen uh, 
onions uh, actually release a sal- kind of a sulfuric acid that in a kifika pa kwa macho hivi na react na bado tunalia macho stupid macho stupid macho stupid macho stupid you can avoid that by uh, cutting onions under running water so that the effect of the sulfur uh, sulfuric gas that is rising does not you do not feel that effect and usifike mali unawashwa so uki una, you, you take the onions this is a demonstration you take the onions and you open running water and so you chop you chop you chop you chop you chop you chop or you can take the onion this is your onion then you have a, a jar of water you set some water and some salt and then you stir and then you soak them there but this you do you do this especially if you're going to chop them immediately and then you soak them alafu unatoa unakata kata you will not cry trust you me or you will not be emotional you know <laughs> I was talking with a friend of mine na alikuwa ananiambia kuna watu wakitaka kulia ama release stress ama kuwa emotional anaenda na chuo kitongo anakata kata vitu mkuu nyingi alafu kimuuza kwa nini analia na kuambia ni vitu mkuu tungo za rifaya iko ya bashara vitu mkuu za rifanya ni kwa anyway that is uh, uh, apart from the side moving on swiftly things to consider before transplanting onion number one. it's always good to do a soil test before planting to know the status of nutrients in the soil which will guide you on nutrient application for onion production that is a, a key thing that we need to understand not only for onions or for cabbages or for carrots but for whatever farming you want to do it's very key to do soil testing and nowadays people have done a lots and lots of farming they have access to the soils you find that maybe the soils are no longer fresh and so doing the soil testing allows you to know which nutrients are lacking in the soil so that when you are aware which nutrients are lacking in the soil and which nutrients you need to boost to the farming that uh, for for the fa- plant farming that you want to do then you can go on ahead and do that you uh, you've done for instance you call us uh, here at a farmers you know with the number running on your screen there and so we tell you you know what you need to do a soil test we guide you uh, the soil test is done accordingly and then we advise you tell you uh, onions need nitrogen or onions cannot work well in this soil so you need to add this and this you need to plant with can or you need to plant with dap to increase the uh, fertility of the soil or, or what you will need to do you need to mix with manure you know uh, just call us here at a farmers you know uh, our quality is up and our prices are affordable you know what i'm saying but anyway you must first do your soil testing first Uh, which also uh, allows you to know what the which nutrients are you said which nutrients are in the soil and what nutrients to supplement in the soil when doing on your farm and but you need to note that a serious farmer should prepare the land to a fine till and add well decomposed manure depending on the soil test one can consider using dap during planting and top press using can at week 4 now remember using dap uh, uh, will be determined by the contents of your soil Uh, do they lack potassium do they lack nitrogen uh, no i'm saying do they lack potassium or nitrogen uh, you can decide you know what i'm going to supplement these soils with dap i'm going to plant these uh, onions with dap that will be a, a beneficiary to your onions and make them blossom i'm on again now to prevent the transplanting shock do the exercise early morning late in the evening or when the weather is cloudy Now remember when you've talked we've talked about cabbage farming we've talked about uh, spinach farming we've talked about uh, carrot farming and for all this if you were keen to note is that transplanting was done early morning or evening and look asema na conrad usiamke saa sita saa sita mchana ba unataka kwenda ku transplant hapo umebant bana umetuangusha bana umeangusha points bana wake up early in the morning if you are a night guy do it in the evening kama wewe ni mtu wa usiku sako wanaitwa usiku sako unaamka kabla uende basement unaenda excuse me unaenda alafu you know you 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 prepare your land properly and you know the weather is conducive and so because the weather is conducive una transplant on your zako pale na unafurahia ama namna gani so to prevent the transplanting shock the exercise is done early morning or late in the evening or when the weather is cloudy but the weather can be cloudy rarely so time early in the morning or late in the evening it is always ideal to trim the shoots and the roots 3 inches for the shoots and 0.5 inches for the roots before before seedling placement to minimize moisture loss and seedling shock during and after transplanting if you remember we have talked about the seedling shock seedling shock is plant go shocked <laughs> you anyway, are joking the plant is not able to grow 
beyond or past that because it has been shocked. It's not a seedling shock. And you see, you can prevent that through eh? uh, una, una kata shoots ama roots at 3 inches and 0 0.5 respectively to reduce or minimize moisture loss and seedling shock. You get the ideal spacing is 8 to 10 centimeters between the seedlings and 15 centimeters for inter-row distance to allow better bulb development. Now, if you're keen, always end on a, a, a centimeter rule of value to Napima. To Napima, this is my uh, this is my first seed. Then Napima, but this is where my second seedling should be or my third. No, 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 no. When is a Pima and a macho? Or actually, farmers use the drips in the drip lines to Pima the spacing for the seeds. And for instance, for kales, you do 30 centimeters, then you leave one drip gap between the kales. And for onions, you need 10 centimeters, then you do consecutive, uh, uh, consecutive, you do consecutive planting or consecutive seedling planting. You such that here is your first seedling in this first drip, here is your second seedling in the second drip, like that, like that, like that, like that, to uh, allow for the spacing. So it's really key to understand the spacing. I know always in that koshamba na hula ati sasa ati wewe na kalamu na hula ati macho ah choke your story ba. <laughs> anyway, one thing to understand about rains or excess watering. With onions, one thing you need to notice is that onions don't require large amounts of watering. You remember we were talking about spinach. Spinach spinach and carrots need lots and lots of water. They need lots of water while transplanting need lots of water during, need lots of water while harvesting so that they can be, the ground is soaked wet. And then when you're uprooting, it's easy. For the spinach, they need lots of water because they have a thin follicle. And when they don't have enough water, then they can fall off easily. Remember us talking about that? Now for onions, it's easy to maintain them because they require less water. Actually, there are people who do, for instance, if you have or if you run a large farm, they water in the morning. If you have a drip system or an irrigation system, you, they, you open the irrigation system in the morning and in the evening. Now for onions, actually you can begin and uh, open the uneza fungulili ya maji yako asubui. Early in the morning, inakunyo, inakunyo, mzuri, alafu, nafunga. And then if you want to determine whether you can uh, you can open uh, or you can uh, fungulia maji yako jioni, you come and use your finger. Here's your, here's, your, here's, your, here's your onion garden. Uh, you take your finger and you dip in the soil. Once you've dipped your finger in the soil and you feel that the soil around that area is moist, then don't you get the crop. That means that there is still water that, that has been retained in the soil. Then let that go. A channel new story, Sasa. Let that go. Wake up the next morning again. It, because these onions are really sensitive to water, you test again. When I use a kidole kwa mchanga, unasikia, ah, apa kuna maji, ah. Don't water. Then that evening, then you can decide whether actually most likely that evening you can water again. You know that can teach you to see or to understand the periodical watering of onions. Eh? Actually, you can do it to same oneza 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 kunafanya Monday morning, Wednesday morning, Friday morning. Alafu weekend unawachi ilale salam. I'm joking. I'm joking. Alafu weekend unafanya Sunday. You get such that you're skipping a day, skipping a day, skipping a day, not to supply constant water because lots and lots of water is not good uh, for the onions. Now, when you have an irrigation system and it's raining as it is, then don't open those fungulia maji. Watch them especially during the time of the short rains. Watch it run your maji. And make sure it's usually good to know, especially for sensitive crops like onions. It's usually good to know because if you if you're not keen on the type of irrigation you're using or on the on the amount of water you provide, then they can cause fungal. Or if you're not keen on the climate, you uh, say imagine so much for onions. Unless you're using a greenhouse, that's a totally different story. I know there are farmers who are uh, passionate. Uh, I think it is also good to have that consideration that you know what the climate is really important in this aspect. That uh, uh, it touch 500 millimeters of rainfall. Tosh, I know mambo mob. And actually, many people make that mistake of uh, watering. When you kill them, you notion here. Plant it, touch it, maji. It touch it, maji ko wingi. Ko ivo tu konayo back to back, bumper to bumper, bumper to bumper. Una mangilia maji subui jioni, subui jioni. Kube that can be a, a trigger for pests and diseases that face the onion. So you need to be really, really keen on the watering. Actually, really, really 
clean of the watering. Now, uh, watering, I know, I know uh, that we've talked about watering, and for owners, just need the right amount of water. Now, if you notice something, uh, it is not watering your crop that uh, releases the bulb. The ile bulb is not actually watering. It takes a lot of dynamics more to come out with that. Now, for the spacing, for the spacing, uh, it's really good for you to note that uh, spacing your onions in kama your carrots and tubers such that uh, 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 if you this uh, also and also for cabbages by the way if you release a uh, spacing kidogo hivi ka head kana kwa kadogo so ka bulb kata kwa kadogo ukiacha enough spacing then bulb inakuwa kubwa unajua una nipata we're trying to shed some light on onion bulb or bulb onion farming and najua uh, umeshanoka I know you're a channel. And so, after the break, we're going to talk about pest diseases, weeding, and, you know, harvesting, storage, and all that. We'll be right back after the break. It's me, ZJT1. Farmers is the home of Africa Farmers Club in, and by extension African farmers. The whole idea behind uh, farmers is to transform the image of an African farmer from a producer into an agripreneur. Somebody who actually does not think about how to produce onions but how much is going to be used to produce onions and so that, that, that way then they can be able to transform their vision, they can be able to look at their farms as businesses and they can be able to know when to engage with the market. What we have done is that we have developed a hub where farmers bring their, co their, their information, bring their questions, their challenges, and other farmers are there to come out and help. Facebook has not just been instrumental. Facebook has been a working partner for myself as well. And uh, how they have, F Facebook has actually transformed the way we relate an open platform. My background is in tech. And I know you cannot build a platform that can reach out to so many people. Initially, it was just a few farmers in two counties, Machakos County and Kajado counties, but now it has transformed. We have uh, a stronger membership from Nigeria and Zambia than even Kenya itself, you know. And the reason behind this is the messages I get from different farmers across Africa. And then something interesting came to my mind and I thought about using the camera. Uh, every time I visited farmers, I would be able to post 
uh, in the community, in the group, in my own profile, and just share the story of the farmer that I visited. And then I asked myself, why wouldn't I get this information, develop it in a way that other people can be able to benefit? If we go for a training, how do we capture that so that those who are not, the farmers who are not able to come for that training can still benefit? And hence the birth of uh, a farmer's media. Our mission as an organization is to, he to, to help farmers, African farmers, to attain knowledge and grow profits. afternoon once again Good afternoon once again. It's me, DJ Timo, here on the Farm Drive. And thank you. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. You know, you can uh, follow us at a Farmers uh, on Facebook, with uh, a Farmers with a Z on Facebook, and end up on a YouTube channel at a Farmers Media. Just on a new red button. Baka uh, Fed, Iko Gray. Aonam again. Thank you once again. Today, as you've noted, Conrad is not with me here. He's still mourning. Uh, the loss of ESG yesterday. <sighs> I'm quite emotional, Kidoko, but it is well. Pray for him. He'll get better. <laughs> anyway, going on to the weather forecast update. Sasa Kesho, watu wa Nairobi kutakuwa na lots and lots of rain uh, with as low as 19 degrees Celsius. Mombasa kutakuwa cloudy with temperatures of 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, Nakuru kutakuwa raining heavily with uh, temperatures as low as 17 degrees Celsius. Adored kutakuwa raining heavily here with temperatures as low as 18 degrees Celsius. Watu wa veka veka veka. It will be raining also heavily with temperatures as low as 19 degrees Celsius. Watu wa Malindi, watu wa Kosti, watu wa Mombasa, na yu maeneo. To our part, uh, it will be uh, having temperatures of 24 degrees Celsius and really cloudy. Uh, it will be uh, temperatures as low as 17 degrees Celsius and raining, raining so heavily. Uh, it will be raining heavily with temperatures of 24 degrees Celsius. What will be Yolo Pali, it will be sunny. Kutakuwa na kajua pale. No, I'm staying. Uh, with temperatures uh, at 23 degrees Celsius, what do you want? Uh, it will be raining heavily with temperatures as low as 17 degrees Celsius. What do you want? It will be raining heavily with temperatures as low as 19 degrees Celsius. What do you diaspora? Hongai. It will be raining heavily with temperatures as low as 17 degrees Celsius. What do you see? It will be. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but what you see, it will be it will be raining heavily, with temperatures as low as seventeen degrees Celsius. What you at the river, it will be raining heavily with temperatures at nineteen degrees Celsius. What you are webuye western, eh? Kwa kukinya shaba, mvua tu, lakini mvua ni baraka. Ama na mna gani watu wangu? Mvua tu si complain tu shukuru mungu. Anyway, webuye will be at twenty degrees Celsius, raining heavily. What you are Maryland. It will be 21 degrees Celsius sunny. You know what I'm saying? That is the sunny side. It is well. It is well. Uh, finally, Watuwa Kajiado County 034. Temperatures will be as low as 19 degrees Celsius. Raining very, very heavily. If you're joining us right now, uh, my name is ZJ Timo. And you're on the farm drive. With me, ZJ Timo. And, oh wait, Conrad Kibe is not here. It is well. We are continuing with the talk of pests and diseases. Now, to story, shedding light on bulb onion farming. 
<laughs> shedding light on bulb onion farming uh, it is well it is well shedding light on bulb onion farming and say nonge delia pests and diseases uh, you one thing we need to understand about onion farming and pests and diseases is onion farming are really uh, sorry onions are really a uh, uh, what do we call it very a uh, plants in energy care in energy care love and affection and if because when pests attack they can easily spread uh, they can easily easily spread so you have to be very careful and pests and diseases especially diseases in onion have the smallest triggers for instance we've talked about uh, watering how you water your onion is really key because that can be a trigger for diseases in onion farming so uh, you see these small small triggers bringing about a, 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 a big impact in uh, onion farming so you can imagine you have one acre of onions and let me tell you one thing onions is like uh, let me give you an example the rain of chicken you know when there's an outbreak of a of chicken flu for instance and my neighbor's chicken have a uh, chicken flu it is most likely most likely that the, if i am rearing chicken as a neighbor then a chicken i'm rearing will be attacked most likely on a scale of 1 to 10 7 out of 10 will be attra- uh, sorry attack, attacked and so uh, we need to be really keen unafaa ku 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 bembeleza onions kama tutoto tudogo with watering uh, kupiga dawa controlling pests and diseases and such so common diseases that affect onions include downy mildew bacterial soft rots pink white rot botrytis where kizungu ni kizungu mkuti botrytis and rusts now uh, bacterial soft rot is what is brought about by watering Uh, so if you need, you're not keen on how you're irrigating your onions then unapea maji mengi maji mengi inaanza kuoza bacterial soft rots and you want when you're harvesting your onions unapata ni soggy if you, i know you know you've seen this if you uh, if you are a farmer and you've gone to a, a farm or your own farm and you are farming onions and then you harvest onions business in a dry mzuri zimekauka zina ka beautiful zina ka to the slay queen onions alafu zingine zimekaa beautiful lapa zituzite slaking onions alafu kuna zingine zimecharara alafu ziko sogi sogi kuna nani kama ukikata katikati kuna eh, eh, they are kind of dark black dark bluish or black in color and they are really sogi sogi ukifinya that is a eh, bacterial soft rots and it may be caused by over irrigating as simple as it is just over irrigating so you can see that if you're not intentional with farming uh, or you need intentional with onion bulb bulb onion farming then that you can such a scenario and we do not want to uh, to you to go losses we want you to gain knowledge and also grow as a farmer so it is really important uh, you have what we call a farming calendar especially for your plant so you know this period I'll be doing this this period I'll be doing this this period I'll be doing this and if you if you in a place where kuna tashwish uko na maswali don't hesitate to call the number on our screen or kama wewe simu tukupiga simu venye Conrad wana sema una slide kwa DM una slide kwa DM hiyo DM ni slippery sana man ukis slide unaingia unatupata and then we talk to you in the consultants our services are high quality affordable cash ama affordable eh, rates right there ama namna gani so si suffer alone if you have an outbreak of pest and diseases then there is always a remedy to control or to overtake who need to run ahead of the pest and diseases so let me give you an example when in in in, in tomatoes tomatoes are, are really affected by what we call a white fly is it a white fly the white fly now the white fly zina kwanga wajanja sana when you are applying dawa on one side of the shamba yeah white fly yeah tomatoes so this is my shamba here the sex mix as an example of my shamba ama ninapiga dawa hapa hivi white flies that roka zien be open the engineer shamba nikuje hapa ndio ingine nipige zina 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 rule this side of the shamba so i end up not solving anything so you need run ahead of them ama ni think ahead of them is it beating its game nitapiga all round nitapiga square nipige square ndio zisiweze kutoka alafu nipige hapa ndani kizipata so it's advisable most likely nikianza kupiga dawa hapa kwa ndio napiga dawa hapa na hapa na hapa to but the eukaeri you know so apo umezibit umethink ahead of your game 
so kita ku control eh, 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 most diseases and most common pests za onions una think ahead of your game unaona unazibita aje unakuja una, you, you prevent just prevention prevention is better than cure so common pests that attack onions include maggots thrips onion flies red spider mites nematodes and the leaf miner make sure you use pesticides from accredited brands to get rid of the pests frequent scouting for pests and diseases is important for early detection prevention and control now this is a farm proverb that if you are a farmer you have to visit your farm uh, uh, once or twice a day to know what is kitu kwa ground ni aje bana usiku una farm nyingi kwa simu hello hey nyanya zinaendelea ziko mzuri ziko mzuri nikuje nini wewe usikuje ziko mzuri ziko mzuri next week tena hello nyanya zinaendelea zinaendelea mzuri zinaendelea mzuri unaendelea unaendelea uko na hopes uko na expectations unapiga tena next week hey nyanya ziko je ziko mzuri ziko mzuri nyingine nyingine tumu ziko ziko mzuri ziko mzuri kumbe vitu zinaharibika bana na wewe ujui ama watu ama the person you've employed maybe is not eh, eh, is not efficient in what they are doing ama they are lazy ama they are lack so as a farmer be present there the farm proverb visit your farm once or twice a day at least wewe ni farmer wewe and a job to ground ni aje especially in pests like leaf miner uh, thrips thrips are really common in onions uh, i've seen once or twice the leaf miner and uh, onion flies onion flies are really common also and uh, the nematodes now let me give an example for for instance for leaf miner you cannot this start uh, this plant has been attacked by leaf miner when there is a tress ukiangalia plant yake unaona this the ukiangalia plant leaf sorry so uh, an example this is my plant leaf and it's green it's green because of chlorophyll isn't it uh, so when i look at the plant leaf there's a tress of white unaona ni kama kitu ni kama snail ilikuwa inapita hapo juu is a trace of white those are signs of leaf miner and most likely knowing the signs and diseases then you can know how to control them trips unaanga tu tu dogo ni kama zinakaa kama aphids eh it dogo tu dogo so you go and take your onions you know the uh, the onion leaf the onion leaf is zinakonga refu si ndio unachukuchukua onion 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 plant tu yako pole pole una piga piga kwa mkono hivi alafu unaangalia utaona kama unaona trips ama una trips so you see that presence presence yako kwa farm ukiangalia eh, the dynamics of the farm what is happening in the farm and you're also inspecting i remember once we were talking with Conrad about eh, livestock farming we say that with livestock farming you have to be very keen because you're watching of your animals day in day out spotting for signs of weaknesses now for livestock farming you're spotting signs of weaknesses you get for plants eh, there are various methods of of or looking or looking for different pests uh, in um, ama diseases kwa crop kama una mpe example ya uh, thrips ndio unapiga piga ka plant hiki kidogo na nikiangusha wadudu ah kuna thrips hapo unapiga but majority uh, there are stages that the onion goes through stages uh, that the onion goes through that you can find you can uh, like let me say you can foresee an attack because of that stage it's the attack is rampant in that particular stage let me give an example onion thrips was not okay apo 3 months onion ziki macho nzuri unapata onion zina po 3 trips zina tokea bwana onion zina tokea wapi so with that in mind then you can have a preventive measure to curb this onion thrips even before they take place you get you don't have to wait for the outbreak you remember prevention is better than cure for the leaf miner the same for the uh, uh, onion flies the same for the red spider mites the same and, and another way of controlling pest diseases is what we call interplanting remember we were talking about uh, interplanting but uh, for onions it's really advisable that piga uh, onions zeze bana aina ya interplant piga onions zeze zitatokea smart kabisa actually i think the planting of onions can attract pests can be an attraction to pests but uh, it is well if you want to interplant or intercrop it is well you can just seek advice and give you advice according to what you want or what you need so you can contact our number down there it's running Uh, uh, at the bottom of my screen up kidogo uh, contact us if you're not able you can slide in our dm and we can talk and see how we can help you you know our uh, our services are at a high quality at affordable rates ndio i'll see you uh, so diving deep into onion farming we are talking about weeding right now and one thing you need to understand about weeding is onion does not need uh, at the weeding mingi 
it only needs weeding to be done uh, like uh, uh, two or three times in a season. Now let's let's uh, give let me give you an example. You can, having a farm calendar is really important because it gives you such details. Like sasa kufanya, uh, for instance, uh, weeding utafanya lean. When did I do my first weeding? When can I do my second weeding? My third weeding? Because owners are in the danger of if if you weed a lot, you might end up like spinach up rooting them. No, no. When they mature, so you have to set calendar dates. Now those calendar dates, when you're weeding, this can be a very good opportunity to check for pests and diseases. So uh, let me give you an example. The life period of an onion is uh, at most, at most, at most six months. At most, ile ile kukaza kabisa six months. So you can set uh, your calendar, for instance, after two months. Uh, the end of the second month, you nafanya the first weeding. The end of the fourth month, you nafanya the second weeding. Alafu fifth month, mid fifth mid fifth month, sorry, you nafanya uh, the last weeding. So, uh, if you know, you, you remember you're still monitoring your farm. Ojalalia maskio, we si mutumelalia maskio. You're still monitoring your farm and you're watching. So while weeding, or while weeding, uh, uh, while weeding weeds in the onion farm, this can be such a great opportunity. Such a great opportunity to check for patients. This is when I'm talking about weeds one, two, three, and I'm going to have my trips of a kidogo. I'm going to leaf minor. Unona. And most likely, eh, uh, ukiona signs kwenye mimoja, most likely, nisa kuwa ina, aujika mina spread. So, eh, uh, eh, uh, unakuwa mjaja pia. Eh, uh, eh, uh, uki, uki, weed pia, una check. Una weed kidogo, una check. Una weed kidogo tena, una check. And, eh, uh, let me give you an example. If you have one acre of a piece of land, one acre, kuna one acre ya onions, sindio? Na mna kuja weeding leo. Kuna za kawana, mtu na kakuota ya kia mjene kakuota, eh, na unawambia kweni macho bana. Tuki nwa weeds hapa hivi, tunakaa macho, tunatafuta pests and diseases. That is an opportunity to do it. Eh, but you can also be doing it concurrently, or periodically, or frequently, so that you know before something attacks, you're there. Yani, kabla kitu happen, uko hapo kwa doorstep. Uko nayo nayo kabla happen. And that is eh, what we call effective one thing you need to understand is weeds should be removed occasionally, either physically or through the use of herbicides. Uh, in one season, there should be at least two to three weeding sessions. Any main, uh, main two to three weeding sessions, the main sessions. And this uh, actually should be an opportunity to watch out for uh, uh, spotting pests. Diseases, kuna vya ranzako zina fair, are they growing, you know. Looking out for, yani ukorada, uke na pale kwa shambu jazuba, kumacho bana, kumacho unona. Izi eh, nyanya zinendele, oh, pardon, nyanya zinendele, oh, yes. Izi nyanya zinendele, eh, mi napenda nyanya sana. <laughs> anyway, mazika wa macho zango zime nyanya, but it is well, it is well. <sighs> so, I'll go to the shamba, and I want to check on my onions. Si enda poka ni mezuba ba na ati ati ni mezuba apa na ba na apa na enda pale kama ni korada ni konganga ni kujeshi ni na cheki ni na cheki kuna trips kuna afids kuna onion insect flies kuna leaf mina ni kwa chumba na so as you do that unapata ukorada mazi we si famo mezuba mo metu para na that's why it's really good to be on your toes and on your eyes. Make sure we cool onions mingi. Anyway, uh, uh, so far, to uh, go story of transplanting, to go a story Watering and irrigating, to the last story of pests and diseases. Now, Sasa, when we come back after the break, to the last story of harvesting, and definitely to the last story of the pan of the day. Yes, sir. I hope you will not miss that. The pan of the day, and most of all, with our particular kipinche la salama pia, with our pair traffic updates. Tuko pamoja in with me, ZJ Timo, in the farm drive. Kabisa.
Melon is a trailing vine in the gourd family. The word melon can refer to either the plant or specifically to the fruit. Watermelon is a type of melon that is sweet and refreshing fruit. Watermelons can either be grown in home gardens for small-scale farmers or large-scale depending on the market demand. You can either transplant or plant watermelon seeds directly. For best performance, plant watermelons in hot, sunny locations with loose, fertile, well-drained soil that is rich in organic matter. It is best to plant watermelons on raised roots and ensure that the soil pH is between 6.0 to 6.8. On average, it takes around 3 months for a watermelon to grow from seed to mature fruit, with smaller varieties having shorter growing times than larger varieties of watermelon. Watermelon growing, if done rationally, and on a scalable basis can be a good source of income. Are you a farmer facing challenges in your farm, pests, diseases, or even unsatisfactory produce? Worry no more, the solution is here. Join us every Tuesday on Diagnostic Tuesday where we talk about various issues affecting agriculture and interacting with experts with knowledge in different sectors of agriculture to provide you with appropriate solution, giving hope to farmers to attain better yields, to achieve financial success and development. Our farmers attain knowledge and grow profits. As we quickly progress from agriculture to agribusiness, market is key. Join us every Wednesday as we bring to you Market Watch, a show that covers candid discussions regarding the state of the market. Tune in and let's turn our farms into businesses. Good evening once again, and it's me, ZJ Timo. Uh, hapa kwa the farm drive. Uh, na I hope to go pamoja ama na mnagani 
remember to keep the three MOH rules. Number one, wear your mask and not, not only wear your mask, but wear your mask properly. And number two, keep your social distance. Eh? And number three, sanitize or wash your hands regularly. Now remember, uh, in just a few minutes, like 30, half an hour or so, we're going to receive the Ministry of Health updates. Uh, with uh, from uh, We're going to receive the COVID-19 updates from the Ministry of Health. And be sure to tune in to see how we're doing. But I believe we hear the enemy is not us or the government, but the enemy is coronavirus. And the, fla the curve is flattening to the flag. <laughs> uh, anyway, the curve is flattening. So let's let's keep on fighting. Let's keep on fighting, man. We, we shall we shall overcome. We shall by grace we shall overcome. Aman Amagani. I'll see you on you. You can be sure if you miss the COVID updates, you can be sure to tune in tomorrow with the mid-morning show with uh, Lillian, Thomas, and Noah Nasiali. And also be sure to tune in the morning uh, with uh, uh, Ashley and uh, Nara. Uh, such a beautiful combo. Uh, and be sure not to miss out also with the farm drive with me, ZJ Timo, and Conrad Kibe. I'm an Amangani, my friends. Now, kwa jamu kwa barabara, ukipigua na mbembo, usiseme ateko kwa jamu na kamu, kwa sababu hivi ndiyo kuku au sio. Watu wangu wa Ngong Road, eh, kuna ka traffic kidogo tu hapo after, eh, ke, hapo kwa Kenya Railway Golf Course. After that, ni free range, Coptic Hospital, nikienda hivo, ni kusawa kabisa. E, watu wangu wa Langata Road e, ni kusawa kabisa ukiingia e, ukifika pale karibu na T-Mall kuna ka jam kidogo na hapo mbele kidogo tu kuna ka jam kiasi e, watu wangu wa Mombasa Road e, ninaona iko fit kabisa ukishatoka town center e, na hiyo area ya neno hapo mbele e, iko fresh kabisa e, iko fresh kabisa mpaka Nyayo Eh, unaweza muingilie pale Bunyala Road upiteka chuomu eh, ama ka shortcut hapo utokele utaondoke hiyo jam eh, ama namna gani eh, watu wangu wa Tika Road he he nika veka veka hakuna jam bana excuse me Tika Road mko sawa bana there is no jam no traffic at all in Tika Road eh, eh, except pale eh, globe kidogo tu kuna jam kidogo tu Eh, yezo, yezo. Eh, watu wangu wa Mombasa Road Kuna kajam pale eh, Next Gen Mall We, Kuna kajam pia pale eh, eh, After Next Gen Mall the, the traffic is flowing Ukienda Imarati na kiduwe kuna kajam eh, After Imarati the traffic is flowing Correct, correct What was Southern Bypass? Eh, kuna jam wana Southern Bypass O oh, nika jam kadogo tu eh, After pale ole sereni uh, but after that, iko fluent ni shwari kabisa ni nwe kabisa. Uh, watu wangu wa upper hill, upper hill, mkosawa kabisa. Uh, akuna barabara watu wa westy roads. Watu wa westy roads, kuna ka traffic kidogo. Mm -hmm. Ni ka traffic kidogo tu. Uh, lakini after that, uh, after university way ni nwe 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 eh what to work your bow what work your bow eh kabisa eh that is a traffic updates and kama ulikuwa tuning we were talking about onion farming before we go to that here is the pun of the day now <laughs> this is really interesting i have loved myself eh nimejichekelea yani now Eh, tulikuwa mimi na rafiki yangu and we were chopping onions and tears were flowing because we were emotional off <laughs> and so he asked me wewe timo una ni onaje una ni onaje eh wewe timo una ni onaje ni macho stupid tu macho uh, that is a pun for the day. But uh, to add on top of that, today we are shedding light on bulb onion flanning. Hey, if flanning is one of the And I don't know TikTok. Now, bulb onion farming, shedding some light on that. Anyway, uh, aside from the pun of the day, it is called Kipindi Chalala Salama. To Kimalizi, it is called Kuhusu Onion Harvesting. Now, 
onion harvesting is not that complicated by the way because uh, once you've endured uh, once you've endured the the uh, the long period of waits of patience of four to five months uh, imagine four to five months in lima umeka pale umeshika gadi umeshika gadi ukorada umetembea kwa shamba and now you're going to harvest so what next in harvesting now here's here are tips for you when you're harvesting number one it's good to have a, a for instance you can have different sections of the farm if you have a one acre of a, of a piece of land you can have this section this section another section another section so that's what one harvest to kiendanga to kiendanga to kiendanga that is for orderly farm, uh, farming uh, number two in, in harvesting onion you need to watch out of the weather uh, whether it's rada it goes safi you remember when we talking about transplanting uh, alafu tuko ile weather tukasema weather lazima ikuwe fresh so unachapa pale asubuhi ama pale uh, after uh, jioni sorry si afternoon masaa ya ya watu siku saku unachapa 5:30 pale 6 una transplant wase wa kurauka na kudamka dembe hmm? <laughs> unachapa eh, eh, asubuhi na mapema 6 to 8 unafanya transplant yako so weather and timing is really key while harvesting onions and uh, harvesting onions uh, is 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 a, a what we call it an art by itself once transplanting is done one should prepare to harvest after 4 to 5 months depending on the variety now remember i told you the latest 6 months it depends on the variety you are farming Uh, top leaves will yellow and begin to fall over an indication that they are ready for harvesting which will coincide with dry and hot weather so kiangalia uh, if you're keen to liangalia timing za kufarm onion tukasema una kuna kuja kufarm onion pale in january na february in january february na kuna extension kidogo tu ya january tuna sema ngana 80 days of january hiyo time the way una fa kuna umoka bana una fa kuna harvest onions Eh uh, alafu unajua hakuna onions kwa market kwa hivyo hiyo ni gold bana. Mtu akishika kitunguu hivyo ana ameshika gold bana. Unaweza kidogo liberant <laughs> But anyway, anyway, it is well. So it's during the time of January and February. Na unajua bora kajua kana kwanga amewaka bana. Hey. Sijui ina kwanga ata sielewa. Hey, sielewa. Ama ni jua ina kwanga kwa hiyo tamu. <laughs> Watu wa geography na sciences mtatuambia hiyo. Eh, so kajua kama waka unapata onion zako zinaanza kutani yellow that is the first indication that these onions are ready for harvest now it does not usually happen simultaneously unaweza pata kuna ka section ka shamba ka kwanza kame 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 tani yellow lazima zinaanza kufall ka pili ka tatu ka kwanza kitani yellow si lazima it is not a must wait for that eh, but if you na eh, tip no tips eh, let me give you an example this is an onion plant si ndio alafu jo onion inakwanga na malizi refu hivi sawa kiangalia tips za onion plant watch kids wanaanza kuwa yellow nzuri alafu zina nyauka nyauka kidogo zinaweza kuanguka zinaweza kuform mulches ama mulch then the onions are ready you have to have a step now why i'm saying you divide them into sections is you can harvest according to venye zimeiva in quotes yani venye zimeiva eh unachukua section ya kwanza in the section ya kwanza we should remember when you farm nganga ni korada uko macho unachiki venye farm yako iko Oja zuba oja tu parada. So let's take section ya kwanza. Onions iko yellow. Unaanza na hiyo section. Section ya pili, section ya tatu, section ya nne unakafunga. And majorly eh, for those who have done onion farming and you've noted, onions as 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 kangi rada eh, just one or a few of them showing an indication. That's the indication that you need or the green light or the go ahead to start harvesting. Now, once you've done that, una harvesting stages when you say connect a section, make a section, make a section. And harvesting is easy unachukua onion plant alafu unakata they remember the the root is a bulb that we need you know i'm saying the bulb that we need si onion plant chako iko hivi unakata hapa unabaki na the plant and you've harvested your onion as simple as that if you're keen you can kata kitu huko na konga na kitu imebaki hapa hivi that has usually been cut from the plant itself the long leaves zinakonga hapo is really been cut from the plant itself. Now because there are different types of onions, kuna onions and you're going to harvest the bulb. This is just our makeshift bulb, though this is an avocado. Uh, you're going to harvest uh, uh, the bulb, but there are other types of onions that uh, you will be utakona una you'll be harvesting the leaves. So it depends on the types of onions that you've harvested 
or that you've sorry that you've planted so that uh, you know you know what mine is a bulb onion then it's simply not squeaky so it's a uh, leaf onion then but remember the indicators watching out for indicators that's why it's good uh, you can say that a farm visit a day keeps pest away <laughs> but anyway it's a farm proverb we visiting your farm we in kulima and you know hustle yako chapa round iko shamba angalia kwenye iko if you really can you be seeing such signs which are indicators of uh, of onion harvesting now, one thing you need to understand is curing of the onions is done by uprooting every single stem and leaving it to dry after which leaves and roots are cut off with a sharp knife. A good harvest offers 20 to 25 tons per acre, depending on the variety. Just imagine, 20 to 25 tons, 25 tons per acre. <laughs> you see, you can't get a lot of but 25 tons of onion. Eh? Yo at a yo osteoclerosis in Asia, man. Mabobic bones in Asia, man. Unakula ukungangare ukuchonjo kabisa. Now, in storage of onions, as we conclude, in storage of onions, one thing we need to understand is keeping the onions dry. Uh, this because onions are easily attacked, especially in wet. Unaskianga, unapewa chakulu, unambiwa, amu unapewa dawa, unambiwa, keep in a cool, dry place. Similarly to onions, we keep in a cool and dry place. For them to stay longer, you see tianze kurot, number one, na kumea pia. Unapatanga ile, ile nini. You provide the, the, the right conditions for the tuber again to it will regrow. Trust me, it will regrow. Unapata imeanza kukuta vitu za green up. Nika ni threat, but ina kuthreat. You remember when we said that uh, yesterday as we were talking about cabbage farming, when you provide the right conditions for, after you've, you've harvested your cabbage, and you've remained with the, uh, let's call them last leaves, not first leaves. Remember this first foliage anyway. Last, let's call them the last foliage. The kama last kid. It's only a moisture kwa your cabbage. See you? I love, it's still intact in the ground. Then when you continue irrigating it, it apataka kisho kadogo cabbage. Actually, can occur at this size. Imagine. Uh, why? Uh, because processing and the layer, leaves in the layer produce, Similarly, with onions, we can provide the right conditions. So we have to be very keen. And uh, one thing I noted is, see harvest come on the market. When there's a harvest, we keep our storage. Hey, kwa ribi kama. After market, take it, take it. Actually, uh, as a farmer, action is also in the harvest. Unafakua, unajua, in your farming calendar, in the next one month, this onions will be ready. This onions will be, according to my farm calendar in the next one month, easy onions to acquire the vacabis. Now we do it. We do it like in January. In January, can I come and make a uka? It's a tafuta market. Tafuta market so you need to supply up and up and up and up and up. When you you unazi one you put them first. I love this guy. Okay, na chop chop chop. Okay, okay. Una pack gari kama imeenda market man. Ome funge yo chapter. Na uko na rich na cash. Now remember, we've talked about onion farming and we've talked about uh, 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 number one, best time to plant is we did the short uh, just pointers. Best time to plant is within the short range periods. Fun, we've talked about fun facts about onion, and the highlight of my fun uh, the fun fact is that onions used to be worshipped. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, they're known as only onions. Anyway, uh, we have talked about uh, 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 consideration between before transplanting of the onions. Uh, transplanting. Remember, you can propagate. Uh, but consideration before transplanting to the layer. We've talked about uh, rains and excess watering and their effects. We've talked about pests and diseases and their control. We've talked about weeding of the onions and we've talked about harvesting. Yeah. And so, as we conclude uh, at as we conclude at uh, uh, this time, uh, make sure for you to have that onion Beautiful taste. Unataka usitake ku import onion, but nasisi tukona eh, the, tukona the necessary tools to do a beautiful and beautiful onion farming. Now, with the heads up I have given you, I believe you're encouraged to go and start a pivot project. Usikule msewa kusema ati eh, mimi nita. Mimi nita. Italima tu. Italima tu. In God's good time, italima tu. Remember. Ata kuma tunawak na God's good timing. Eh, pia sisi lazima tuchangamke tufanye kazi. Mungu ametupa nguvu, ametupa neema, tuchangamke bwana, tulime ama namna gani. Eh, so that is your heads up. 
I am do that pivot project. Changamuka, try, try. Actually, it's by trying that you gain experience. It's by trying you can see who uh, is a penda kufam nini kufam nini. The majority of the language story na kumukele story ano na makabich. That's ya kucheck. And uh, it's a living testimony that you know what uh, we learn by experience. But now I've given you a kind of a heads up to go and begin on your farming, you know. And so I hope you've been encouraged. In conclusion, Kikafunga. Now remember, keep social distance. Hmm? Wear your mask properly. Uh-huh. And uh, sanitize and wash your hands regularly. And tune in for the MOH updates. Uh, remember, love one another and give flowers to your friends and family when they are alive and when they can smell them. So much you can have a grave yawban. A panaban. Appreciate people while they are alive. And on that note, I want to appreciate my director, my producer, Sarah Wanjiku. Where? Madam, anafanya kazi safi kabisa. Eh, anafanya kazi safi kabisa. Eh, and so, be sure and be keen to tune in tomorrow with the farm drive with me, ZJ Timo and Conrad Kibe. Mali, Conrad, ako sa hii. Eh, mumombe, atakuwa salama. Kesho atakuja na pom na power. Ni venye nujue ni mtuwa kiburi kidoko. Ewezi mkubali ya kuja. He cannot face it. But it is well. Ama na nagani. Love one another. Keep safe. Stay safe. Peace. Love. Unity. Pamoja.